So now we're going to learn about the switch statement. And this is all us still learning about control flow. So control flow is sequential, iterative loops, and conditional. Control flow is how a computer reads your program. By default, it's sequential. And then you could control the flow of how the computer is reading your program. So default sequential, you could put in an iterative like a loop using the for keyword, doing a for statement. And you could say, OK, loop here. And you could also use a conditional. So conditional, you could use an if statement, or you could use a switch statement. So now we're going to learn about switch statements. And I take a moment just to reinforce the control flow concept because we recently had applicants for a position at the college teaching this stuff, and a lot of those applicants didn't, couldn't explain control flow. So I want to make sure you know it. <laughs> I feel obligated to tell it to you and make sure you know it. Um, yeah, all right, so control flow. Now let's look at the switch statement. So here's the switch statement. We put switch. And uh, a switch statement is always going to start with switch. Hey, I want to switch on something. And then I'm going to have cases. And so I'll switch on some case, and there'll be a colon after that. So if I just say switch and then the curly braces, then that's going to allow me to switch on one of these cases evaluating to true. Evaluating to true. So I could start out with false, and then I could have it do something. And uh, let me copy this for a second. There are a couple cases. This should not print. That shouldn't print, right, because it's false. I could do an expression, 2 equals 4. That's not going to print. And I could do uh, 2 equals 2. I'll do 3 equals 3, just mix it up. <coughs> and then I could do 4 equals 4. Also true, does it print? And now uh, let's run it. Boom. So prints, that's all we got. Because there's no default fall through. No default fall through in Go because uh, why? It doesn't make sense to me. Why would you want like one condition evaluated true, one case evaluated as true, or this is the one I want? Now everything below it should run. So fall through is uh, not by default. It's only if you specify it, and you can specify it. So let me copy this code over, and then we'll sh I'll show you that. So the next one is no default fall through. Let's take a look at that. So if I put fall through, now it's going to fall through. Also pr true, does it print? Yeah, it does when I have that in there. So that's kind of cool. So I'm going to copy that and, uh, and then do this and then come over here and add something in fall through, funky fall through. Let me call this funky fall through. Get rid of that. All right, so now take a look at funky fall through. I'm going to get another one which isn't true. And format. I'll make this 7 equals 9. I'll call it no print or not true. I'll call it not true 1. And I'll make this one 11, 14, not true 2. And I'll make this one 15, 15, true 15. Cool. So now this one's going to evaluate as true. It'll fall through. This will evaluate as true. It will fall through. And uh, this one will evaluate as false. And it'll print. And then this one will evaluate as false. And then it'll print. <laughs> And this one will evaluate as true, and it'll print. We don't need to fall through. There's nothing to fall through to. I'm going to run it. And not true one, not true two printed. So if you fall through, then, okay, everything afterwards, like, gets dumped out. So I think that's kind of wonky, logically, but that's the way it's built. And uh, you should know about it. Generally speaking, though, just don't use fall through. Just don't use fall through. The next thing I'll show you is default case. And so default case is uh, just, hey, this is what happens if nothing else evaluates to true. Cool. And run it. Uh, 
expected default, expecting, because I've put that on the wrong side. My curly brace is in the wrong place. Format it and run it. There we go. Unexpected format, found case and one or more errors. Default case. Oh, default. There we go. You just need default. All right, there we go. True 15 printed, but the default didn't print. So if there was nothing that was true, by default, the default would fire off. What happens if we have fall through here? This is default, because you fall through to it. You're saying, hey, if this is true, then print the next one also. So you might be able to use that logic in some interesting way. So that's how we add fall through in. And then let's take a look at the default case. But first, let's copy funky over here. Sweet. And uh, we'll do default here. And we'll call it default. And for default, we'll bring all this back up and just have a couple of cases. And so neither of these are going to print. And uh, so default will go since none of these print. We no longer have any fall, fall throughs here. So that's the default. And we'll drop that in. And then we can also switch on a value, and we could switch on multiple values. So I'll show you that. So to switch on a value, I could just have the value right here. And when I have a value right there, it no longer evaluates on a bool, but it evaluates on the value. So money penny. This money. And uh, we'll put bond. And needs to be capital. And we could have Q. Format it and run. Bond, James Bond. All right, so that's uh, switching on that. If I wanted to, I could assign that to a variable. Same thing. So that's just putting the value there in a slightly different way. I could just put the literal value there, or I could put the variable there. And if I format it and run it, same thing. So that's switching on uh, just uh, value. And you're kind of saying which case does it match? Which case does this? Which case does this name match? So that's kind of cool. And then the the last one I'll show you is you could have multiple cases. You just put commas. And uh, and this one will make M. And then format it and run it. This is default because I have lowercase b. Let's make it uppercase. There we go. So it switched on that one. So I know that was like a lot of little pieces of syntax to throw at you. We're going to get a chance to practice that with the hands-on exercise. So just take this as kind of like... Uh, uh, introduction to seeing how it works and we'll get some hands-on exercises so you could reinforce these skills and really master how switch statements work. Let me see how long this video is. I think it was a little bit longer. That's 835. In the next uh, video, maybe we'll take a look at the documentation for switch statements. Mm -hmm.